good morning and welcome to Power for Today Prophetic Ministries with George Dello coming to you with 15 minutes of truth for revival. And I want to pick up and continue on the names of God that are given to us in the Bible that are very significant and particularly the redemptive names of God, which show us the things that Jesus Christ has brought to restore back to his church. And today we want to look at the Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there, or the Lord is present. In Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35, he says, All the way around shall be 18,000 cubics, and the name of the city from that day shall be, The Lord is there, Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. The Lord is present. This should be the, 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 the goal of every church uh, that... that uh, the, the God's manifest presence is there with us. He is in our midst. Amen. That's why we come together. We come together for the presence of God and uh, to be in our midst. In Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 33, verse 13 through 15. Uh, he says there, now therefore I pray, this is Moses speaking, now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find, gra find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, uh, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. In other words, Moses was telling God, if, if you're not going with us, there's no point in going. If you're not going with us, we're not going because we need you. We need your protection. We need your help. We need your presence with us, Lord God, to, 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 to go forth and uh, uh, to do what we need to do and, and have that protection and your blessing upon us. And, and so, uh, again, uh, how much more do we need God's presence in our midst? Uh, as the church of Jesus Christ, we need our pre his presence in our lives. We need his presence when we gather together as the saints of God. You see, sin is what separated uh, a man from God, and, and he lost his place in the Garden of Eden. He was cast out of the Garden of Eden because he had corrupted himself. He had corrupted the very nature of God. But Jesus came to bring reconciliation between man and God. Jesus came so that he can restore God's presence to us, and even in a greater way than Israel had them in the Old, Te in the Old Testament, because God could be there with them. But now, through this new covenant relationship, God literally comes to put his presence inside of us. He comes to dwell within us, and there's nothing more important uh, uh, than having the presence of God with us. I don't know about you. If there's anything I want in this life is God's presence with me 24 seven to, to live and to move and to walk with that, that God consciousness, uh, uh, all through the day, knowing that God is with me, knowing that God never leaves us nor forsakes us, knowing that God goes with us wherever he sends us, that, uh, having God with us means everything. And, uh, uh, as Jesus said in John chapter 15, apart from him, we, we can do nothing, nothing that's eternal, nothing that's significant, nothing that's going to remain and last. Uh, we need God. We need his presence. We need his Holy Spirit uh, continuously with us to do the things he's called us to do, to carry out his will and purpose. As you look at the, the, the early church in the book of Acts, uh, wh wh what, is, what is the book of Acts all about? It's really, it's the Acts of the Holy Spirit, and uh, they were totally dependent on God's presence to do what they did to spread the gospel from from a handful to millions over the first couple of centuries. The church grew by by bounds, leaps and bounds, and, and uh, uh, grew from just uh, uh, these twelve disciples until within a couple of centuries they had millions of Christians and affecting almost every part of the, the known world at that time. And uh, how did they do it? Because God's presence was with him. The Holy Spirit was with him. And they, they recognized that. And they looked the Holy Spirit in everything they did. They prayed before they do anything. And they, they looked under the Holy Spirit for his direction, for his anointing, for his presence, for his power to help them fulfill the, the, the gospel call upon them. So uh, 
uh, Jesus uh, tells us that uh, uh, we we need His presence. We need Him. We need that uh, be uh, being that abiding place with Him if we're going to do the things that God has called us to do. Life and eternal life are only found in Him and our abiding relationship in Him. Amen. So as we abide in Him, as we we uh, uh, again have that God consciousness whereby we live and move and walk by the Spirit of God and we keep our hearts and minds stayed upon Him, that's when we're going to be a, 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 a successful and prosperous in the things that God has called us to do. The very purpose of creation was that God might have this intimate relationship with Him, that, that we could enjoy one another and and uh, uh, all of the blessings of God, all of the good things of God are in Him and become ours through that relationship with Him, through that divine oneness with Him, through His His presence with us. And even as we see God walking in the Garden of Eden uh, uh, with uh, Adam and Eve, talking with them and, and uh, fellowshipping with them, that's been God's purpose from the very beginning of time. And when you get to Revelation chapter 21, when everything is said and done, that's exactly what is going to to uh, uh, be brought forth. God is our Father, and we're His children, and we're going to be with Him eternally, forever and ever and ever, and uh, enjoying that relationship with Him. And uh, again, uh, at that point, we're going to be able to see Him face to face, and we're going to dwell in His physical presence forever and ever. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Again, what's he saying? I want to be with you. I want to have this intimate relationship with you, a personal, uh, individual, intimate relationship with each one of us. And, and uh, th this is God's desire. He created us for this very purpose. It's all about relationship. It's not about religion. It's not about do's and don'ts. It's about relationship and an intimate one with that. And so he calls us into that place where we can have that relationship with him. We can walk with God on a daily basis and enjoy his presence with us. And in uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, he says, To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. In other words, Paul was saying this is the mystery that, that uh, wasn't revealed in the Old Testament. This is what this is what Jesus came to do. This is what God's purpose was. He says, here, I'm going to explain to you right now. This is it, which is what? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory, that God can come and actually live within us in this intimate, personal oneness with each one of us. And you see, this again is something that separates Christianity from every other religion. We have a God, this holy, this mighty, this all-powerful God who came down from heaven, who came to us, who came to his creation so that he can enter into this relationship with us, this, this, this the divine oneness with us. And uh, whereby we can enjoy him and we can we can experience his fellowship. We can experience his reality with us. There is no other religion that has a God so near unto us as the Lord our God is. Amen. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 through 18, Paul said this, What agreement has a temple of God with idols for you are the temple of God. Let me say that again. For you are the temple of God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. 
That's God's promise to us. That's God's desire for us. That's God's will for each and every one of us, for his church, for his for his people. Amen. That's why Jesus came. He came to produce this kind of intimate relationship with the living almighty God for each and every one of us. God wants to dwell inside of us. God wants to walk with us. God wants to be around us. God, God wants us to, to experience that reality of fellowship with the living God. And we can all have that as we embrace this work of Christ and allow God to have his way with us. Everything about this salvation has to do with our relationship with God, having that intimacy, that fellowship, having God with us. Listen, when we come together for church, there's no sense, there is absolutely no sense whatsoever of having church if God's not with us. If, 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 we're, if we're not coming together as a church to have God in our midst, to, to be there with his manifest presence and power, there's no point in coming together because everything God does is through his presence. Everything God does is through his manifest Holy Spirit. He's given us his Holy Spirit. He's given us each one of us the manifestation of his spirit uh, for the profit of all. And so if we don't have God's presence, if we're not coming together as a church to have the presence of God with us, there's no point in even meeting, amen, because it's God's presence that changes lives. It's God's manifest presence that saves, that delivers, that heals, that transforms. It's God's presence that makes a difference in our midst. All of the promises of God uh, uh, to Israel, to bring them into the promised land, to pour out upon them his favor and his blessings, were based on God's presence being with them, that God would dwell in their midst and, and, and be there in the camp, that God would be in that holy of holies, there to lead them, to direct them, to strengthen them, to help them, protect them, to bless them, that they can enjoy his manifest presence. He led them by a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire through the wilderness. He led them into the promised land that he could dwell with them forever and be there with them. But unfortunately, Israel kept rebelling against God and they rejected God's ways and, and they disobeyed them over and over again to finally got to the place where God had to leave the tabernacle with us. God had to leave the temple of Solomon. God left them and turned them over to their sins. And see, but again, God's purpose have never changed. That's why he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus to do a work in us whereby he can transform us from the inside out and make us a people that can obey them, that are empowered to walk with him and empowered to, to live a life of pleasing unto God so that we can enjoy his continual presence all the days of our life. Amen. And so this is where... Uh, 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 what God has called us to and into. This is where it's all going to end up uh, when we will dwell in the presence of God for eternity. Amen. Forever and ever and ever. This should be our highest goal. This should be our greatest endeavor. Our greatest desire should be to have the presence of God with us all the days of our lives. And I'm talking about every minute of every day. It's not about coming and going. It's about abiding, staying upon, and clinging to. Amen. Being one with God, maintaining that intimate relationship with him. That's why he tells us we're to abide in Christ. That means to remain in that place with him, stay with him. We don't come and go. We come in and we stay. We maintain that relationship by the way that we live. Everything Jesus did upon this earth was because of God's presence with him. Amen. He came as both uh, all uh, uh, totally God and totally man. But he lived his life during these through the, the years he lived upon this earth in the flesh. He did it as a man so that he could identify with us and we could, we could, uh, 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 we could identify with him and, uh, uh, knowing that he experienced the same things that we go through in this life. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Why? For God was with him. Everything Jesus did in this natural body upon this earth, he did it the same way he called the church to do it because God was with him. Holy Spirit was within him, doing the work through him. Amen. And the same is true for everyone God used in the Bible. Okay, they accomplished what they did because God was with them. That's why we read earlier, Moses said, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from this place. He understood the importance of God's presence. He understood how essential it was that God was with them to help them and to lead them and to guide them and to bring them into the place that he had promised, okay? This is why the disciples were told right before Jesus ascended into heaven, the last thing he told the disciples was, go, go. Go and wait in Jerusalem. Do not go do anything. Do not go any place, but to go back to Jerusalem and wait until you receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father to come upon you. In John chapter 14, verse 16 through 18, he says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not, it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. That was Jesus' promise to us, that he was leaving, but he wasn't going to leave us alone. He was going to send another helper, someone just like him, that would come and be with us forever, who would not just be with us, but inside of us. He would dwell in us. Why? So that we can do the same things that Jesus did. We can continue with his ministry and carry it out. Why? Because God's presence would be with us the same way he was with Jesus, the same way he was with the early church, the same way he's he's been upon this earth from the beginning of creation to help us and to be with us so that we can do the things that God has called us to do. Adam and Eve lost the presence of God through the fall, but Jesus came to restore that presence through his reconciling work on the cross. We have been made one with God that we might have everything God has and is so that we can fulfill, <coughs> excuse me, we can fulfill the calling and purpose of God for our lives upon this earth. Amen. Again, this is George Dello, Power for Today Prophetic Ministries, coming to you with 15 minutes of truth for revival. Do you have God's presence with you? Are you walking with God and his presence? Are you dependent upon God being with you to get through this life and do the things that God has called you to do? He is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is here. The Lord is present. Just call upon Jesus. Get into that place of abiding in him, and you will have God's presence with you for the rest of your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. In Jesus' name.